welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm doing a series of videos on books that have been transformational for me and and so in that light, I want to introduce you to Jesus, a very short introduction by Richard Bauckham. Richard Bauckham is a world authority on the New Testament, and he's written in collaboration with Oxford Press this introduction, and it gives an overview of the historical Jesus findings, and he shows us in a really concise and easy to read way, a full picture of what we can know about the historical Jesus based on archeological evidence, about scholarship, and just his wide range of reading and understanding of uh, the New Testament scriptures and in their Old Testament context. So it is, amazing. I grew up in a tradition where we talked about this content a lot and so I was really interested in reading it to see how it aligned with that. Not only did it hit check all the boxes of things that I have read in other books and uh, what I've learned at church, but it sharpened and clarified things that I didn't know. It is eight chapters long, it's about a hundred pages, and it, it comes with these illustrations of uh, art or archaeological sites to or artifacts that help to bring the whole thing to light so to life so I highly recommend you picking up the book one quote or idea that re like gripped me when I read it had to do with the kingdom of God Bauckham talks a lot about what Jesus talked about in general, like what his emphasis and points were. And and he has wonderful points to say in light of the context or culture that Jesus was um, moving and living in. And one of those things was about how Jesus related to the Father within the Jewish context. Here's the quote. It says, it's on page 64. What makes Jesus God talk rather different from the practice of his Jewish contemporaries can be seen in the remarkable fact that whereas Jesus speaks consistently of the kingdom of God, he never, in direct speech about God, refers to God as king. Within the parables, the figure who stands for God is rarely a king, but commonly a householder, a landowner, or father. Outside the parables, Jesus never calls God king, and very rarely Lord. The one term that he does use with relative frequency is father. In the Jewish literature of the period, on the other hand, God was pervasively, pervasively represented as king or lord, but only rarely as father. That's so cool, knowing that. Because for me, when I, I read that fact, I realize Jesus is making a profound statement about the relationship to God if his primary way of relating to God is father. What are the implications of that? Uh, what is he inviting us into? And then Bauckham explicitly says it on the next page. After he quotes Matthew eleven twenty seven, where Jesus talks about all things have been handed over to me by my father, he says, here Jesus speaks of unparalleled intimacy between a father and his son, as though this was his own special privilege, but he also envisages it as a sharing of this privileged access to the father with others. This is a family into which others can be introduced. Jesus is talking about unparalleled intimacy with God and that it's a family in which we can be introduced. Doesn't that change how we relate to uh, our faith and what God is actually doing in the world and how he wants to relate to us? Like the implications of it when you start to sink into it start to become clearer. Uh, we know Jesus better, what he was saying. It's, you know, you're you're talking to an expert about Jesus. And so you can go into the scriptures, you go into the New Testament, and you can read it through that lens. It's wonderful when you can compare and contrast with the Jewish literature at the time versus what Jesus was saying. It just sharpens and makes everything so much clearer. This would be a great Jesus study group book. So what you're going to do is gather your friends, grab, gather the people that you that are interested in this, and uh, what you want to do is read the chapter on your own and mark up the book. So circle key terms and ideas that Bauckham is, is making, and then highlight the 
phrases or ideas that stood out to you. And then in the margin, star the things that are really important and then put questions behind things you want to go into with uh, when you have more time. And then when you gather in your group, I suggest you go through these questions as a starting place for your discussion. Question one is choose one quote from the chapter and discuss what Bauckham is trying to say with it. What's the point he's trying to make with that quote? Question two, if there's a Bible passage like the one I read just previously, read it and then discuss the point Bauckham is making with that quote. And then finally, what is one question or reflection or revelation, those highlighted pieces that stood out to you from the chapter. And that's it. Those three questions is all you need uh, to get to get so much from that little book and to deepen your faith and make your Bible reading more enriching and engaging. To end, I'm going to end with a prayer from Henry Nouwen. And I think it is a really good fit for our discussion here about Jesus and who he is and who he calls us to be. So here we go. Dear Lord, help me to keep my eyes on you. You are the incarnation of divine love. You are the expression of God's infinite compassion. You are the visible manifestation of the Father's holiness. You are beauty, goodness, gentleness, forgiveness, and mercy. In you, all can be found. Outside of you, nothing can be found. Why should I look elsewhere or go elsewhere? You have the words of eternal life. You are food and drink. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the light that shines in the darkness, the lamp on the lampstand, the house on the hilltop. You are the perfect icon of God. In and through you, I see the heavenly Father, and you, with you, I can find my way to him. O oh, holy one, beautiful one, glorious one, be my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Guide, my Consoler, my Comforter, my Hope, my Joy, and my Peace. To you I want to give all that I am. Let me be generous, not stingy or hesitant. Let me give you all, all that I have. Think, do, and feel. It is yours, O oh Lord. Please keep it and make it fully your own. Amen. That's from Henry Nouwen's You Are the Beloved, Daily Meditations for Spiritual Living. Well, if you're interested in more books that have transformed my life or are worth reading, click the bell to subscribe and I will see you back at my channel uh, for transformational literature. 